Hello everybody, tis I the rumpled one. Flash Boys by Michael Lewis. Yeah, I've read two of his books this, in about a week's time. This book is another good one. It's about high speed trading, high frequency trading, where a millisecond can, can be the difference between profit and loss. And the thing is, he details some things that was going on during the time I was day trading stocks. Just some of the things that these guys could do to scam and game the system. Oh, it's all legal. There's nothing really illegal about it. But you wonder why people were buying space as close as they could to the market. Because they could use it for inefficiencies arbitrage if they could they could do deals the price in Chicago futures was one thing but on, on the exchanges it was another they could game the system they could game the system when that when the markets went automated and there was more markets not just NASDAQ not just the New York Stock Exchange and the thing is, some people went to the SEC with some of this information, nothing was done. And in fact, it was funny, this one guy did an experiment to show how he was getting scammed. Thing is, I did an experiment once to show the SEC how I got scammed. And the thing about this book is, he doesn't even... have the same example as I do. So it just goes to show there's another example. What happened was I had two accounts. And there's something called a partial fill. Let's say you want to buy a thousand shares of stock. Well, they might only sell you a hundred. That's called a partial fill. But they still get the full commission. Because on these flat commission brokers, you know, five dollars for a trade they're going to get their $5 whether they give you 100 shares or 1,000 shares. So what I did was I put in two buy orders just like that to buy the same 1,000 shares of stock. I got partial filled on both. So basically they got two commissions. But in reality, since I was using limit orders, one order had to be get in ahead of the other. So that first order should have gotten 200 shares, and they should have only gotten one commission. But you see, they were gaming the system. And I documented this, sent it to the SEC, and I, I got a, you know, response back, but, you know, boilerplate, no action to be taken. But he goes on to show some more examples of this stuff. SEC does nothing. Meanwhile, the little guy... And actually, some big guys are getting taken, taken to the cleaners. I mean, there's that one company, TradeBot, that I think went something like four or five years and never had a losing trade. All because they knew how to game the system, to front run orders. I mean, if you know a big order's coming in, you can go buy up the shares and then raise the price and sell it to them. They, they want to fill it. That's how it works. It's not how it should work, but that's how it works. And the thing is, nothing's being done. Nothing at all. Like he said, there's basically two classes of traders now. Those with the speed and those who aren't. You can sit there with what you think is your high-speed internet. You don't have a chance. Not a chance. These, If you can't beat a computer, you're not quick enough. It's just that simple. So that's why I had to devise strategies and methods that it didn't matter what these guys do. If the trigger happens, I can still make money. But he also cited an example how these bucket shops, these other high frequency trading shops, would go around and, and send out all these little orders to test the market. And I remember writing some programs because uh, my trading buddy, Roger, shout out to you, Roger, he once called me up and says, hey, 
you know, every time so-and-so buys like 181 shares, you know, the price will go up. So I actually wrote, I had market scans looking for fills of 181 shares. So we're basically piggybacking off these guys. And then we find something else that maybe somebody's doing 137. You know, the, the number would change from day to day, but once we found out whatever, what that quote-unquote number was, then we could piggyback off of them. It was pretty, it was interesting. But now I know why it worked. See, back then, didn't really know, understand the why. But we were tapping into what these high-frequency guys were doing, but we didn't know that. Because high-frequency trading hadn't really come to the forefront. But anyway, once again, and even if you're not a trader, these books are good stories. I mean, they're true stories, but, but they're written well, and this, like I said, can't put them down. So, Flash Boys, Michael Lewis.